for the introduction and for the opportunity to speak. I'm going to talk to you today about Triple, which is what I think of as the community building aspect of bringing all of the tools and the data and really making things open and findable. I've kind of geared this talk towards two sort of people, although I'm sure everyone can get something out of it. Um, those who really want to organize and share the data through the web with a focus on long-term data reuse and community, and especially those looking for a tool to help, I would love to talk to you. Um, I'm also gearing this towards people who are passionate about ontologies, metadata standards, and accessibility. Um, in this community, we love to collaborate, and so I would love to hear any suggestions, et cetera, that you might have for me. So I'm going to talk about what Triple is, for those of you who don't know, as well as what the current version has to offer. I'm also going to talk about modular data pages and data attribution, which is something that I think really doesn't get hit home enough. So what is Triple? Triple is an open source biological database platform. It really aids in the creation of community-centric data-driven websites. It gives a place for your community to really get together and kind of share what they know. It facilitates um, fair data standards with ontology focus. It has consistent web services. It also has um, language translation support through the underlying platform to really help get that out and make it accessible to people in other languages. And we get more features through shared development. This is really what I see as making things sustainable, is making the amount of work that each of us has to do a little bit less because we have enough on our plate. And it also helps share standards through extension modules. It's ontology driven. It has a new service and plugin based API. It's species agnostic. And we've actually proven this with multiple species across many kingdom using this tool already. It has extensive administrative interfaces for those who don't want to dive down into the code. This really helps with getting maintenance by um, undergraduate students, et cetera. And it's modular and extendable. It's built on a platform called Drupal, which is just a generic content management system. And the advantage of this is this is how we get that translation support. It also provides a whole bunch of generic community building extension modules. This is a huge thriving open source community that is worldwide and has amazing security support so that you don't have to deal with stuff that you don't want to deal with. Um, we also use the Gmod shadow database um, to store a lot of the metadata associated with things. This is an amazing system that I adore, um, extremely generic. And Triple is really a collection of modules that builds on top of those two, glues them together. It gives you data importers that actually have beautiful web interfaces with help text and drop downs and auto completes for your users. And that really helps collect the metadata standards along with the file upload. It has data pages across a huge variety of data types. And you can actually add more content types for your own data types straight through the interface or through code if you prefer. It has data visualizations and searches. And all of this is all open source, all well documented and open community and open kind of, it, it's an amazing community. You really have to be part of it to understand. Um, and so we really work together with extension module developers. Um, many of us are both core developers and extension module developers. And we sort of bring extension module developers into the fold, really to try to make sure that we have a lot of generic support across a large number of domains. So who uses Triple? There are over 125 sites that report using Triple. And one thing I really want to highlight with these screenshots is just how diverse these sites can be. We're not about giving you that canned look that really gives you kind of the functionality, but not much personality and not much of a feeling of home for your users. It's all about customizing it and making it exactly what your community needs. You can also see here that we have represented insects, we have plants, we have kind of everything across the board. Um, and these sites are hosted all over the world, and the community is all over the world. Now, 
As you've heard many times before about sustainability, oftentimes after software has been around for a while, it needs a complete rewrite. This software is now 16 years and going strong. And so this is kind of our major version rewrite that we've been going over. This is still in the process, but we're at a really good point so far where you can start actually installing this new version. Um, this new version uses a modern service and plugin based API that really things, makes things a lot more truly modular so that you can do a lot more plug and play and microservices. We have a new data querying um, object oriented layer that makes it a lot easier to both access Chato in a really intuitive way and a really important performant way, but also um, it's a generic layer that can be used with other Postgres databases as well. And we have a huge variety of content types and fields that I'm gonna talk a bit more about later. We now have automated testing across multiple versions that is run through GitHub workflows to make sure that we're really capturing everything that we say we're compatible with. Um, and this has been a lot of work. We're also improving our default content types and fields. We really wanna focus on making it a lot easier for site developers to focus on attribution and metadata without having to put as much thought about it. And it also ensures that we are co all collecting similar things to the best of our abilities. And one of the things that's coming um, is powerful and fast searching via Elasticsearch um, with rich metadata integration. So the next examples are gonna show my bias a bit. So I thought I'd just straight up tell you, um, I'm from an agricultural crop and genomics breeding kind of background. And so you're gonna see that in a lot of the next slides. I'm also all about open source, open access, community led, sustainable, accessible, but I have a feeling that's amenable to this audience. <laughs> um, despite all of this, the triple community is extremely diverse. And so we support a diverse number of species and it can be configured with types of data that we haven't even thought of just based on how it's designed. So what is a content type? Um, Triple is really focused on creating pages, data pages of content that can sort of act as dashboards. This is amazing as a way, for example, you're creating a page about your study and you want to link to that in your paper instead of trying to put all of the information about your experiment and everything in there. And it allows us to link both that metadata with the actual files. You can configure these through the user interface or via code. We have available collections. Um, Gener general, um, which I'm going to show you in a minute, genomic, genetic, expression, germplasm, experiments. And one of the things we've really worked on is a YAML format here so that everyone can define sort of a community standard collection that they host in their own extension modules so that we can all standardize even across all of the specifics of our amazing fields. Um, the core Collection is project, organism, study, contact, pretty generic here, but really focusing on that core attribution um, set. And here's where my bias is showing. Um, these are some of the collections that my group is developing, which is like field trials, biochemical assays, greenhouse experiments, phenotypic, phenotypic traits, genetic markers, geno, geno, genome association studies. Each of these content types is a collection of fields and fields are pluggable com components. These are like your widgets. And so the idea here is that each kind of concrete type of data or relationship that you're trying to pull through would be its own field. And that field can be um, attached to many different content types, depending on where it is, it knows where it's allowed to be discovered. On the side here, you're seeing a triple three version, so not the most recent version, um, of a phenotypic trait page. Um, this is until the pods are swollen, for those of you who care. And what I really wanna show you is just how dynamic these pages can be. All of this is pulled from database and visualizations. Um, and it's just gonna scroll here for you. These fields handle loading, curating, viewing, um, you can pull in experimental metadata, you can draw diagrams, um, basically anything that you think would be helpful for your user. Fields can be a single piece of metadata, just like a description, but they can also be a block of information pulled through a relationship. And this is one of the things that I think is really powerful. And so for example, for a phenotypic trait, this can be measured in many experiments and we can actually pull through experiment information and summarize it. And these are 
full of ontology terms. All of our content types are associated with ontology terms. All of our fields are associated with ontology terms. And even the individual data properties within those fields are attached with ontology terms. And all of this is actually available in embedded within the page for screen readers, et cetera, to make sure that it's more accessible, as well as in web services. And what you see on web services is exactly what you get on the page. I really want to focus on attribution. These are a new set of fields that are being added to content types to really make sure. I think that this is sort of a cornerstone of open science myself, is to make sure that as we start releasing things openly, one of the things that I see with my researchers not wanting to do so is that they're worried they're not going to get proper attribution and credit for their work. We're trying to make this a lot easier with rich contact and publication linking so that they can choose the names of various people just through the drop down and um, relationship fields that embed that information in many other pages so that they don't have to re um, repeat that attribution everywhere they want to be credited. These are some of the fields that we're currently working on and associated with their ontology terms. We're going to be collecting the data collectors, the data analysts, data custodians. Um, the custodian is usually the PI, the person that is sort of the long term um, person you contact. Data curators, people who actually worked on cleaning up that data and making sure that they get the credit they so rightly deserve. Research organizations that are sort of housing things, funding, data license, so important. Um, the yeah. widget for this is going to be really rich so that it really lets researchers know what the various licenses are so that they can become a lot more versed in how to choose their own data licenses. Citations, including ones that work on before things are released and can actually generate the citation based on other metadata. Linked publications, including indicating how those publications are linked, which is something that I often don't see. And so saying this is the primary publication, but this is also all of the references. These ones reused the data, but didn't really care about the results, so on and so forth. Um, and of course, DOIs. Um, we want to pull that data attribution at all levels. So at the highest study level is often where they'll actually input most of the information. So the citation is obviously there. But then we want to pull that through so that anyone downloading raw data that may be associated with that record gets that attribution, both in a pop-up window that they cannot ignore, and depending on the file format actually embedded within the files that are being downloaded. We also want it associated, we're pulling that through and embedding it so they don't have to click through a link because we all know that people don't. <laughs> actually embedding it so that they see it right away, including the license for genome, for the actual data sets that you're seeing, right down to the an analysis results, and right down even to like a specific gene. So say you end up on that gene page for a completely different reason, and you're on there and you're like, oh, this is associated with trait XYZ. And right beside that, you're going to see all of the citation information, the experiment that it was by, um, all of the attribution, et cetera as well as the click through if you want more information, but that citation information front and center with the data license so that you understand at every step of the way what you're getting. It's also going to be integrated into all of our downloads. So even when you download heterogeneous sets that are from multiple different studies, you will get a pop-up with all of the references that contributed to the set that you're downloading, even if they're from multiple different studies. And again, trying to really put that citation information in that file itself if the format allows as comments. And with that, I'm going to show you that we have a lot of resources, um, a very passionate community. The Slack link up on top links you into the community. While it's not a, while you often don't hear a whole lot of chatter, we're all there and we're all very happy to go on. You're welcome to just ask questions, see if it's a good fit for you. If you end up having any problems, you can put it on here. You can also put it up on our GitHub. Our GitHub is not just for like developer bug kind of issues. Help requests, feel free. Like it's just an open community where you anything goes, put it up and we'll do our best to help you um, and really bring you into the fold. We also have weekly um, co-fests where all of our core developers are there every week for 
around a two hour span and anyone can just pop in and ask whatever the heck they want. And it's on Gather Town, which makes it really fun because it's sort of like you're playing a game. I highly recommend. Um, I would like to give credit to the community. I cannot possibly fit <laughs> enough information on this slide. And so I've put on here the logos of um, many of the, of all of the core developers, but this doesn't even hint at all of the amazing people who submit issues and bugs and questions and use it on different organisms. Um, I'm really a huge supporter of, you cannot say it's generic until it's actually been used on a wide variety of things and really getting that diversity to make sure that we're hitting all of the various points and actually making things accessible. And with that, I know we're getting close to coffee. The QR codes will take you to all of these resources. I would love to chat with you. Please come up. Thank you, Lacey. Um, I know we're going to cut into coffee time, but I am grateful for your respectful staying here and listening to this great talk. If you have any questions, please come over to the microphone. Um, I have a comment. I have a great ontology to tell you about for that uh, list of things, licensing and citations and others are from the data use ontology. We can get you terms from there as well. Uh, please. Right in front of you now. So first of all, I want to like acknowledge and cheer you on for mentioning um, assistive, you know, supporting assistive technology, web content and accessibility and all that. That's great. Um, and I really appreciate it. So my question is related to um, particularly thinking about all the attention you're paying to attribution. It's awesome. You mentioned DOIs for publications. To what extent are other persistent identifiers embedded in the work that you're doing? So do you tie into ORCID, for instance, for the people and <laughs> things like that? The, the person asking the question behind you smiled and, and, and assented to your question because that's the one that we're going to ask. Go ahead, Liz. <laughs> yes, the DOIs go way beyond just publications. Um, there are um, the system set up for the DOIs really allows you to enter as many as much information about where it's going and how it's being used and where um, where the DOI is referencing. And even if you don't have a DOI, it allows you to mention the um, the hosting place and the URL, and it will make it into an automatic link to make sure that we can actually link out to as much as humanly possible. Um, there are going to be default fields for, well, there are already generic DOI fields on almost, actually, I think every single content page, um, really focus on getting that linking out, but there's going to be a lot more um, sort of beautiful widgets. One of the things that I really wish I could have shown you through here is the curation side of things. And so you can actually on any of these data pages, if you have permission, you can just click the edit button and actually go through and change things as needed if you come across um, mistakes, et cetera. And we have many curators who are using our um, resource directly. And we actually even have a couple of our profs that as they're going through, they see something and it bugs them, right? Because they're passionate about it. And they can actually go in and change it right away. Because we all know that as soon as that prof's um, brain switches to something else, that thought is gone and you, ain't get, you are not getting it back. Um, so I love that they can edit it right there and then. Um, I hope that answered your questions. Um, we are also adding an ORC ID. Um, linking automatically. I think there actually is a widget already for that through Drupal. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you. It was a, a related question on the, the identifier. We've, we've tried to do tracking, you know, awesome attribution. Thank you. Uh, we, we've struggled with things like persistent ID for organization and, and things like that. So there's ORCID ID for individual. I suspect that's what you're using. But um, we, we couldn't find a good representation of uh, international organization, for example, or funding sources. It remains very much text-based. I don't know if you've done anything similar. And to your, your second comment on, you know, the ability of editing and correcting information, we were just talking with Alberto about, you know, how do you validate and how do you capture that stuff's wrong? So I'd be interested in talking to you about tracking the wrong thing and how attributing the wrong thing and uh, following up on that with this. So I don't know if you have thoughts on identifier for things that are less obvious than our kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
I'm not sure I so much have a lot of thoughts on identifiers. One thing that we do is um, many of those attribution fields are linked to our generic content um, contact type. And so, for example, for all of our funding agencies, for all of our outside collaborators, et cetera, we create contact pages for them. And we actually specify what, like, is this an organization? Is this an organization? Is this a person, et cetera? We can put a bio information, et cetera. And then we can link it. And those relationships say how, what their role was in the thing that they're being linked to. And so this allows us to, for example, for all of our funders, one thing we like to do is we like to upload their logo on their contact page. And then we, um, in the field that renders, we just show a logo cloud instead of all of that information. And if you click through that logo cloud and go to that contact page, you can actually then also see fields that show all of the things that they have funded on our site, which makes our funders very happy and makes a very good dashboard for them to get in and double check that we're doing exactly what we said. Um, I think that's the first question. And now I've already forgotten the second. <laughs> Could you? The second was about, uh, can we track wrong things? Yes. And so Drupal handles that inbuilt. We didn't have to worry about that. You just enable revision. And um, that actually saves records of the changes of the metadata and the person who made that change so that you can really look through there. Um, we don't yet show that history to the people coming to the page, but now I'm thinking about it, that would be a really nice field as well. Thank you. 